Hey all, here are OS Reviews. Today we're taking a closer look at the Vankio Go 200. This is a smart mini Pico projector, and it really is mini. It's smaller than even a Rubik's Cube, and what makes it smart is it actually runs on Android. So it has built-in Wi-Fi, it has built-in Bluetooth, even has a tiny little trackpad on the very top that you can use to control the cursor point. So just like a Android TV box, it has a built-in smart operating system that you can directly use to watch YouTube and Netflix and browse the web, even without connecting to a smartphone or computer necessarily. Now, like most mini Pico projectors that we've checked out, the native resolution is still going to be a little bit on the lower side, coming in at around 480p. But as is the trend and observation, most Pico projectors work better than their resolution would suggest, especially with the large screen experience up to 100 inches on the wall that you'll be getting, it's pretty cinematic, and as long as you're not focusing on too many small details in text, it still is very much serviceable. Other packaging contents include the charging adapter, which unfortunately is using a round proprietary plug. It would have been really nice to see something like USB Type-C or even micro USB, but it is what it is. Built-in battery that will last you for around two hours when you're on the road, which is decent enough for, say, a film as you are uh, using it unplugged. Now here is a free HDMI cable, and part of the reason why they give you one is because the projector is so small that instead of using a standard full-size HDMI, they're actually using a micro HDMI. So it gives you this to a full-size conversion cable, uh, and you can also find other ones, of course, or you can rely on wireless screen sharing or use the built-in Android system as alternatives. Here is the built-in remote. It uses two AAA batteries. You can use it to control things and move the cursor around, and there's also the quick user manual. Now taking a closer look at the projector next, it is pretty well constructed of aluminum unibody so it feels very solid and sturdy. The front here features the lens, although there isn't a lens cover on this model, and there's a focus style on the side that you can use to adjust the kind of sharpness depending on how far away you are from the wall to get things more clear. There is a fan as well as a speaker on the side. The bottom here features a USB port that you can use to plug in a thumb drive or a hard drive if you have media like videos or photos that you want to read back directly from it. There's also a headphone jack if you want to plug it into uh, your own headphones or other speakers. There is that charging port and the other side features the power key. One thing that is missing from the base, however, is this standard tripod mount. That is something I would have liked to see, but overall it is what it is. I guess you can always pop it up at various angles or hold it. It is pretty versatile and small, uh, but still that would have been nice to see. Now on the very top is where we have the kind of interesting touchpad area. It is a function that we've been seeing more of on recent mini Pico projectors including the model that we saw from Lenovo just a few days ago also had a built-in trackpad. So it allows you to control things or give you an option without even needing to use the remote necessarily. You can control the cursor point, go back onto the main home screen, menu back, change the volume, and it is pretty useful to have. So let's turn it on and take a closer look at the performance next. So here's what the projected image looks like. Right now we have a virtual screen size of around 70 inches on the wall and things still look reasonably good. And of course if we zoom all the way in you can still make out some pixelation since at the end of the day it's not a crazy uh, full HD or 4K projector. Uh, but for most cases in terms of looking at static images as well as videos it perfectly suffices. Now the interface is pretty similar to other Android TV boxes in the sense that we see these tile-like layouts for uh, selecting between the different apps like the YouTube player, which is built on in, AppToy TV, which is a built-in app store that allows you to download more content that is going to be optimized for the interface. And we can see here um, that it takes a few seconds to open up, but afterwards we can do things like download Netflix, for instance, Amazon Prime Video, and some of these other streaming services. Again, this thing has an auto keystone correction function, so it means that it can change the tilt of the image to remain completely flat, uh, regardless of uh, you know how you point it onto the wall. So I can even flip the image around, and it will automatically flip with me, as you can see there. So it actually works pretty well in terms of the sensitivity there. Anyways, taking a closer look at some of these other features, uh, there's also, you can tap on this mode here to switch into the HDMI option, 
for the wired mode. Uh, you can also tap on all apps here to take a quick look at all the complete list of programs installed. We have some of the standard utilities from Android, like a calculator, Chrome, Gallery. You also have built on in a Facebook app in addition to Netflix is built on in. In terms of the menu, we can also take a look at the settings. And from here, we can connect to a different Wi-Fi hotspot. We can choose our, to change the Bluetooth settings as well as adjust some of the other parameters like the brightness of our projector. So if we tap on that, we can make it brighter or dimmer. And in order to scroll on this projector through a list, for example, all you need to do is double tap. And when you tap on the touchpad for the second time, long hold to move up and down through a list. So here's a quick demo. I'm gonna double tap and kind of flip and keep on holding. And you can see that I can kind of scroll through a longer list and move across things. The same thing goes if you're browsing the web and you wanna use the touchpad, simply double tap to kind of move up and down. However, it doesn't support gestures like pinch to zoom, so that is something to keep in mind. Now, in terms of the screen mirroring, we can choose if we want to share the screen of a iOS device, uh, like an iPhone or a Mac, we can choose AirPlay versus Ease Share or Wi-Fi Display for Android devices. So if we are using iPhone here as a demo, I'm gonna tap on that and it's Pretty similar to other kind of Chromecast-like products on the market. Other Android TV boxes have pretty similar functionality these days, but we can find our device here on our list just by tapping on screen mirroring, and it seems like we found the eShare, and you can see the screen here is now mirrored. There's gonna be a split second delay, but overall it's not bad. The Wi-Fi reception of the projector itself seems to be pretty stable. Pull up something like a web page, and it will be a good opportunity to take a closer look at kind of finer text and how it's rendered on this display. If you have larger text in general, it still is pretty visible, but of course for smaller details, it would become a bit more pixelated as you are zooming in. Uh, but overall, as long as you're not squinting at kind of Excel documents and using this for spreadsheets, it can still display uh, most things legibly as you're reading. Now playing back a video, the speaker is coming out from the projector itself. All right, so turning the volume down there, takeaway is the quality of the kind of projected image is actually quite good. Again, for movies and moving images, as long as you aren't squinting at tiny details, it overall is still a pretty cinematic experience just because of the fact it's a larger screen. You can project it onto a ceiling if you're lying in bed and just kind of relax and it's still a pretty fun experience. I'll use it for doing a bit of gaming on a larger display, it definitely still is serviceable even though the frame rates are not going to be instantaneous. Uh, it still is a pretty enjoyable process because of the larger screen that you have to work with and you can definitely get a little bit of gameplay uh, done uh, if you're sharing it with friends and family and this is kind of what that experience is like. Now again, it's not the brightest projector in the world, so if I do a quick uh, demo here of turning on some of the lights here, you can see how the image quality will definitely degrade as the lights are on in the room. So that is one thing to keep in mind. It's the same thing said about most projectors in general, but especially something like this, which is really compact, the size of a Rubik's cube there um, in terms of the form factor, that is one thing to keep in mind. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the Vankio Go 200 mini cube-sized smart Pico projector. The fact that it has again a built-in Android operating system and a trackpad, you can definitely use it to enjoy videos and photos when on the road. It's super light again and great for portability. So if that's what you're looking for, this might be worth a closer look. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Vankio Go 200 Mini Pico Projector.